Right, so you'll know when you've got to use special angles because you're going to be told no calculator. Quite a bit of trick happens with no calculator. Okay, so what that means then is that you need to be using your special angle diagram. There's several of these. The uh, easiest one for me, I'll show you, it's when you write your angles here, you go, go up, naught, 30, 45, 60 and 90 and then you go up on the right hand side going up 0 1 root 2 root 3 2 and 0 1 root 2 root 3 and 2 obviously r is always equal to 2 okay then using that you will replace the trig functions with their angles and the angles will be special angles with the ratios. There is an argument about whether this can be done in the calculator. Um, for many of them it can, but in terms of the risk, um, the, the calculator always rationalizes the denominator so you want to be careful that it doesn't, it's not obvious that you have used a calculator so it's probably not safe to do that. Okay, so let's take an example. Let's say that cos of an angle, now that's your unknown, okay, equals root 3 sine of an angle. And you need to solve for theta, and let's say they tell you that theta is an element from negative 270 all the way up to 180. Okay, so what makes this a little odd or new is that now what we're saying is there is an unknown, there we go, it's done twice, but now this root 3 looks like it's coming from the special angle diagram. So we're going to end up using the special angle diagram once we've figured out what's happening here. Okay, so let's take it from there. And you've got a cos and you've got a sine. So the check to see whether this makes a tan or whether you've got to do co-functions is do they have the same angle? And they do. And if they have the same angle, you can divide both sides through by cos of the angle. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Cos theta over cos theta will give me 1. And this thing will give me... Just going to add in the step. Okay, and that then goes to a tan. So now I've got 1 equals root 3 tan theta. The way I'm going to use special angles now has got to do with the fact that I need to isolate the trig function which is the tan theta. So doing that this is going to be divided on the other side. So I'm going to have 1 over root 3 equals tan theta and that's when I go to my special angle diagram and I say well what is the degree where tan gives me 1 over root 3 and then obviously we need to remember that tan is the y over x so for what degree in my special angle diagram is the y1 and the x root 3 perhaps I should have added here that this is x and that is y so the y needs to be 1 and the x needs to be root 3 so it's this one okay so on the calculator, this is a very good example of one. If you go and you plug in tan 30 on the calculator, you're actually going to get um, root 3 over 3, which is this thing rationalized. And then we will know you've used the calculator, and then you won't get the marks for that. So bear that in mind. Okay, I'm going to finish the answer here. So this means that the theta is 30 degrees. Okay because of the special angle diagram. And once I've got the 30 degrees, that is going to be my reference angle. The other one I need to consider is now where else this comes onto the Cartesian plane. So back here, tan was positive, right? So I am dealing with something that is going to be in quad one and quad three. Okay, now I have been saying in the other videos about equations, 
with, uh, with trig equations is that with tan you only need to do the one answer because it will repeat every 180 degrees anyway and you're going to go plus k 180 so we really only need to do one at this point I'm only going to do the one in quad one if tan was negative I would only do the one in quad two and then it would repeat every 180 to get to the one in quad four okay so we really only need the one you can do both if you want to, you will end up with the same answers because of that restriction given. Okay, so now I'm going to say in quad one, theta equals 30 degrees plus K180 because I'm dealing with tan, so it's K180 instead of K360. Okay, so K180, and then what I do need to do is I need to get my answers that fit into that boundary over there so I have the one answer remember I don't need another one because it repeats and I don't have to do anything fancy at this point I have my answer so now I need to pop it into the interval okay and that's when I sub in various numbers for k so we'll test them out over here let's uh, let's check out the different k's if k equals 0 then obviously theta will be 30 does that fit into negative 270 to 180? Yep. Okay, there might be quite a few here because that's quite a big interval. For k is 1, we're going to have theta is 30 plus 180, which gives me 210. Does that fit into the interval? No. So that means I'm not going to go any further. I'm not going to now go k equals 2 because obviously that's already too big. So k being 2 will be too big. So let's go negative 1. If k is negative 1, then I'm going to have, I'm going to have 30 minus 180. So I'm actually going to get negative 150. Does negative 150 fit into that? It does. Okay. Then if k equals negative 2, I'm taking theta and I am my my 30 and I'm going to minus 360 essentially so I'm going to get negative 330 does that fit into that no so then I'm obviously not going to go any further so that's all I've got okay turn out to not be that many all right so my final answer then for my final answer then is theta is an element of curly brackets because I'm listing and it's going to be 30 and negative 150.